Well, yes. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Cyprus. Good evening, Poland. Uh, good evening, everybody. And good evening, first of all, good evening, Andreas Christo, the commercial counselor of the Cyprus Embassy in Poland, in Warsaw, Poland, let's say. Uh, Andreas, if you could uh, say a few words of mm -hmm. greetings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Piotr. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much for putting together this fantastic event. Uh, following yesterday's very, very successful presentations and tastings, I'm sure. Uh, today we have the second group of our distinguished uh, Cypriot wineries, and we are definitely looking forward to having again equally interesting presentations, and of course, we are um, uh, we're, we're, we are eager, we are waiting for those presentations, and um, uh, I will not take any more of our valuable time, and uh, let us go ready, and uh, let's, uh, uh, let us be, uh, let, let the Cypriots, the Cypriot wineries, the Cypriot winemakers, to take the floor and deliver their presentations. So, uh, Piotr, I turn it back to you, and uh, you you take it from there. Thank you. Thank sure. you very much, Andreas. Thank you. Very great. great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we start. We start now with the first winery, which is the Macaronas, uh, Macaronas Winery and Mr. Theodoros. And ja hello, yeah. Theodoros. Just to recall you, just to recall hello. you. Hello. Hello. Yeah. The one word yes the spittoons do not forget to use it if not if you remember how it ended when i mixed up panayotis and uh, uh, marcos and marinos yesterday so yeah Theodoros, this is your time thank you thank you very much uh, hello my name is uh, theodoros macarunas i'm the winemaker of macarunas winery um now I will tell you a few words about our winery and our region. Uh, the winery is in uh, Ledimbu village, uh, 14 kilometers uh, east of Paphos. Ledimbu is in the area of no locally as in the vine village because the region is uh, associated with a long tradition in the vine growing. Uh, my family grow 25 hectares on vineyards in Ledimbu area, in altitude of about um, 500 meters until uh, 600 meters. Uh, the surrounding hills, uh, the crystal gypsum, the limestone, together with the interrupter exposure uh, to the wind of the valley, modify the local uh, microclimate. We are the only winery in Cyprus that is an estate uh, winery. Uh, we produce around uh, 70,000 bottles and we also provide grapes to many other wineries locally. Uh, in our portfolio, there are many of the rare indigenous uh, varieties of Cyprus. Uh, last part, not least, our winery is close to getting as an organic certification in all wines, the first of the king in Cyprus. So uh, now uh, let's go to to the wine. Uh, the first wine uh, we um, uh, we taste is the Sportigo. Sportigo is uh, the previous. Ah, Sportigo is a uh, is a Cypriot white variety with low alcohol. That one. It's only 10.5, the alcohol level. The pH is 3.9. Total acidity is 71.2. Seven, uh, 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 that wine is vegan friendly. The vineyard is 13 uh, years old in a vertical shoot position with spray trellis in altitude of uh, 550 meters. Uh, oriented as to west. The soil is sandy, uh, limestone, and the crystal gypsum. And uh, the harvest we have is uh, 23 of uh, October, 
we have a salt fresh in whole grapes and uh, the fermentation is spontaneous uh, and uh, make a, uh, in the lease for 11, uh, 11 days and aging in the, um, in the uh, in the lease and making badonage for eight months. And a taste note of that one is uh, markedly aromatic and uh, cadiate, white flowered peach, green apple, uh, light ethereals, and refreshing. In the in the mouth is light body, sun minerals, and texture tensions. Uh, would you like to go in the next one? Okay, uh, the next one, uh, wine, is Vasilisa, and that one is single vineyard. Vasilisa is Cypriot uh, white variety. That one is, uh, uh, um, is 12 uh, alcohol level. The pH is 3.25. Uh, we harvest in uh, 1st of October. Uh, in that one, fermented the 50% fermented in a cash and barrel in uh, 500 liters, and the other 50% fermented in stainless steel tanks. Uh, we make a badonage um, for uh, five months, and that have uh, more aromas of uh, sweet lemon, vanilla, stone fruit and uh, elegant lemony expansion on the on the palate. Uh, is <laughs> I'm very quickly. <laughs> uh, yeah, very fast. Yes, tell me acacia. Acacia yeah. is, uh, uh, is a popular wood uh, for for barrels in in Cyprus. No, uh, that barrel acacia is from France. Uh, I don't like to use uh, oak barrels for aging white wine. I don't like fumé wine, for example, for fumé so uh, chardonnay or fumé sauvignon blanc because it give aromas more aromas or smoke of the mm -hmm. in the wine. A cashew barrel give more flowers aromas. Mm. And, uh, and for that I use a uh, cashew uh, in. Sorry, and I, I for didn't that, hear. And, and, ah, for them, yeah, for that, okay. I use, yeah, yeah, yeah. They use also in Austria, in some part of Austria, they use acacia barrels. Uh, some Burgenland for white or for red? Well, for uh, for both, I suppose. Yeah, uh, the, uh, okay. for red now mostly, but uh, well, yeah, it's a good question. But I know they use. <laughs> okay, another <laughs> question. Another question is coming. Uh, uh, the name, meaning the queen. Okay, Vasilisa is the queen. What's special yes. about this variety? Okay. Hmm? Um, uh, uh, tell me the, the so uh, not very high alcohol um, uh, and uh, the altitude the is four hundred. The, the philosophy of the wine uh, of the winery is to make a uh, low alcohol wine. Uh, the lower alcohol wine we have is the Sportigo ten point five. All mm. my wi uh, white wine since between eleven point five until uh, twelve, and my red wine is thirteen. Okay, so this is, let's say, uh, this is something uh, perhaps not unique, but this is this is uh, not very common in Cyprus, yeah? Yes, because it is, uh, it's too hot in Cyprus. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, any, any other other questions? Coming. Stay with us, Theodoros, please. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Happy you joined us. Uh, uh, and now, yeah, now Ficardos, Ficardos, Ficardos uh, from Ficardos Winery. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah, so this is your floor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go on, Ficardos. 
So first of all, uh, my name is Figardos Figardos. I'm uh, part of the family. Um, it, the winery initially started from my dad, Mr. Theo, the one you see now in the picture. Uh, he initially made wine just as a hobby. Uh, he had a restaurant and so that was basically the house wine. Uh, he kept making wine for his friends, relatives, uh, other restaurants, uh, until the point where the hobby became a business. Uh, so that's how it started. Uh, officially 1990, that was the first year we made a bottled wine. And uh, he continued making wine until today. Uh, I'm the second generation. Uh, the winery is located in Mesoyi. Mesoyi is pretty close to town, so we're like 10 minutes basically from town center. But the vineyards uh, are located uh, in villages like Kili, uh, Polemi, Strubi, Arodes. So uh, from the winery, approximately 10 up to 30 minutes. Uh, the altitude in our area is uh, starting from 230 meters up to 750 meters. So for example, the vineyard you're looking at the picture now is in the Kurtaka uh, village, uh, which is just 230 meters. And the, in the next photo we have, uh, that's the highest point where we are in Banarodes, 750 meters. So uh, we are always in between that area. Uh, the soil in most of the vineyards there is limestone or chalk. Uh, we are approximately always 10, 12 kilometers from the sea. And uh, we prefer to stick to that specific area because uh, that was the, where the first vineyard uh, my dad made wine was. Okay. So uh, if you don't mind, we could uh, start with the wines. Okay. So the first wine we are going to taste for tonight is our Xinisteri from 2020. Uh, this uh, wine is made just from Xinisteri. Uh, it's two uh, basically villages. It's many vineyards, but we prefer these two villages. Uh, Hulu is the first, uh, or Kurtaga, where the first vineyard you saw in the picture was. That's about 40% uh, of the grapes come from there. And the rest of the grapes come from Gili village. Gili is approximately at 550 meters. Uh, so we have two locations, and that means also two different harvest uh, dates. Uh, the average age of the vineyards is uh, 20 years old. Uh, just to give you an example, some of the vineyards are only 12 years old, and some are actually 60 years old. So it's a combination of newer and older uh, vineyards. Uh, the harvest date uh, normally in... Uh, uh, Kili is end of September, beginning of October. And uh, in Hulu, uh, in 2020, we were just 12th of September, which is actually quite early. We had a heat wave, so we needed to harvest the grapes about two weeks uh, earlier than uh, usual. And that's why we have uh, just 11 bome of harvest uh, sugar. Uh, so this specific vintage, we only have 11.5% alcohol. Usually we get around 12, 12.5% alcohol in our Xinisteri. Uh, all right, the acidity is 5.95 in tartaric or in sulfuric, it's around 4 grams per liter. And uh, that's where usually you are. Of course, Xinisteri needs to be adjusted, especially in our altitudes, which are about 500 meters. Uh, so I, initially, Xinisteri will be in sulfuric, I'm talking always, around 3.3 uh, grams per liter, and we need to adjust uh, for the acidity. Okay, so the production in 2020 was a bit less than normally, so we were made about 15,000 uh, bottles of this one. Uh, okay. So now in terms of the actual taste of the wine, so in our Xinisteri, we uh, can find, because of the altitude where we are located, uh, it's more peach, uh, apricots. Uh, we do have citrus coming in. Uh, we do have some pear and a lot of green apple. 
And this stone fruit is mostly found in our altitudes uh, in that specific area of Paphos. Xenisceri can be very different depending on where you are. If you're in a higher altitude, uh, far, uh, let's say more far away from the sea, you usually get more citrus. We are always, always more in stone fruit, peach, nectarines, uh, and so on. Okay. Right. Do you have any questions related to uh, the wine or the winery or Paphos, anything you want? Okay, tell me, the, the uh, price excellent, more or less, of this wine? Because you do not uh, have an importer in Poland, yeah? No, we don't have an importer in uh, Poland. Uh, I don't know now. It's uh, not easy question to say. You you, uh, may, you can write it on chat afterwards because I forgot to ask Theodor also about it. Uh, uh, let's say in um, we export in Germany, so at the shelf in Germany, our exchange is around eight euro. So I eight don't know euro. if that helps. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Germany is a little. Um, Little yeah. price here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, thank you very much, Ricardo. Uh, yeah, well. uh, and uh, uh, is it a common first name, Ricardo? No, definitely not. Definitely not. I, I'm the only person in Cyprus with this name <laughs> at the moment. So the, that was difficult in school, at school. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Everybody knew that Ricardo. The Ricardo yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I couldn't do anything. Okay. Wrong. Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, the teachers. Yeah. Uh, uh, right. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. Very much. Uh, and uh, come back to us uh, uh, with the red. With the okay. Leonardo. You, you're Indeed. coming back at the end. Yes. At the very end. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so, some very unique opportunity. Uh, Sporty. Oh, yeah. This is this is uh, still about Sportico, and somebody was commenting about the fruit. The fruit in this one is super. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Andreas from the third winery, which is Macca's winery. Andreas Psaras, please join us. Yeah. Andreas, hello. Yes, yes, I'm here and I'm happy to be with you. <laughs> hello again. Yeah. Hello so, again. Your time. Go on, please. Yeah, First please, let me, let me put in perspective of the history. We started this winery because we had the luck to have Marulla, the mother who made the vineyards. When she left, we decided to do the winery to honor these hardworking people. These pictures from Gazanzagis, he says, you have uh, the brushes, you have the colors, you can uh, make the paradise and go in. And this is the vineyard uh, leave. Now, having these people, uh, we decided to do the wine. I'm an economist by profession. So I, I got a guy from France, a master of wine, a guy from New Zealand to consult me. I found it very interesting. When they saw the soil, I was standing there with two guys with international statue. And one said to the other, if I had such a soil, this has the stolithic soils that we have are, are very unique. Uh, we are in altitude for 950 to 1,150 meters from sea level. We have, a, um, this is the Kyrenia ship in the picture. Uh, there is a long history. It was transporting Cypriot wine, uh, Kumantaria, in, uh, in the ancient times. And it's in the occupied uh, area of Cyprus. So in order to remind us and honor, we have decided to have it in our local. Now, this uh, new winery, we started in 2007 with a small production. In 2018, we came to around 300,000 bottles of production. We have exports in nine countries that they all came by themselves. They like the wine and they asked to, this amazing picture is the area with the vineyards up there in, in our area. Uh, we have a portfolio of 15 different wines some of the international, but we try to focus on the Cypriot local varieties, Promara, Xinisteri, Maratheftigo, Levkada, and Yanudi. Uh, we do believe in the Cypriot local varieties. Uh, we have uh, 
many international awards, the new winery, we op still operate from temporary basis. We started the new winery, I'll speak to you about it. But uh, this new winery has uh, these 15 different types of wine. Um, and uh, we, we have uh, some aging wines uh, to have out in the market now 2003, two, uh, 2013, 2014. One of the important things is the um, innovations in the European Union. This new winery competed in Europe for innovations, and we got the only two innovation programs in 2014. We developed yeast from local varieties, working with a local university. And uh, the first Xenisteris with the yeast from Xenisteria coming out now. And the people who tasted them, they liked them very much. They're very unique. We also developed a software for wireless management connected with Wi-Fi connections uh, with the possibility or the ability to use drones uh, to help in the wireless management. So some very interesting things are happening. Uh, we got already 110 international award uh, rankings above 80. We sent, for example, to the counter nine wines and they both ni all nine get uh, rating above 80. And that tells us a lot about this land and the local varieties. Um, we, it is, uh, we have designed a new winery with some innovations. The new winery we started is going to be 100% gravity opera operation without uh, any pumps. That's a quality characteristic. It will also have rooms for visitors to come and stay and uh, leave uh, the process. Uh, this is the basic idea, but we are very keen and interested for exports and uh, the uniqueness of the Cypriot varieties make them attractive. Uh, there is actually uh, someone in uh, Germany who tasted our wines a long, long time ago and uh, they said uh, our red entry-level wine and he said this wine, the price makes you believe it's an average wine, but when you taste it, it's a higher level wine. So Cyprus has a very good uh, history and uh, great potential with all the local varieties. And we do develop wine yet year after year. We want to we control now around 200,000 square meters, uh, either hours or with contract, long-term contracts. And every year we add, we want to come to a point where we, uh, we control more than 450,000 square meters. Now, I listen to you. Hello? Yes? Yes. Hello? Yes, yes. Did you, did you hear me? I didn't see you, Mr. Piotr. Did you hear me? Yes, is yes. There a, we, we hear is you there anything school. else you want me to say or clarify? No, we, we can. Uh, we we just have some photos to to show uh, uh, the the other yeah the the barrels, uh -huh. and we can tr pass to the tasting yeah and the, and the sweet wines also. Yeah, yeah we have uh, my cousin Nama. The first name of Guandaria was Nama. There are some restrictions of Guandaria in the thirteen villages, and our enologist decided to get the grapes from our area. Actually, there is a book by by Maria Rosario which states that Kumandria was done in our area as well. And if the enologist, the scientist, believes that uh, um, grapes from our area could give us better results, we decided to get grapes from our area, and we got the name Nama, which was the first name of Kumandaria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe we can pass to the tasting. OK. So this is my cask since 2020. Uh, you have notes of peach, apple, mint, and white flowers. Uh, we, as I said, we do try to as much as to focus on the Cypriot varieties. And this year we come out with Xenisteri with yeast from Xenisteri. Okay, and uh, 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 any technical details? We didn't okay, the, the alcoholic volume is 13%. Uh, uh, the rest, it's, I, I did send you the back label. You have the back label with all the details, so that's all. Let us 
focus on the on on the, on, on all the wines and the history of the area. Uh, we did send the back label with all the information on 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 the wine. We have a question about the food pairing. About the food about pairing. The... Wine and food pairing. What would you suggest to this uh, with this Okay, wine? the there are some conflicting views here, but some people obviously say wine with fish and uh, uh but there are people that are challenging this uh, uh that is they say that you can use red wine with uh, or white wine. So it's a, it's again a question of taste and preference uh we uh, uh, and it's something that we also believe that is uh we do have people that would uh, prefer red wine and sometimes they have fish with red wine mm -hmm. yeah uh, but what you personally what would you what would you eat to this okay food? we will follow the, the, the basic rule that is uh um cheese uh uh fish uh, and uh, salads and uh, this these types of fits of, okay. for, of dishes with a uh, white wine and then uh, with the red wine will yeah the red wine will be uh, yeah. yeah will be later uh, one of the in, one of the interesting things as i said before which uh, as we were a new winery the um, we did have exports to to nine countries and in all cases people like the wine they came to us uh, we we didn't yet because as a new winery we had many things and uh, fairly large production from temporary premises. Uh, but I found it very interesting that people uh, tasted the wine they liked it and we did send already 14 containers to China, three containers to Russia, and some smaller quantities to other countries. But that tells us a lot. That is the uniqueness of the varieties and mm -hmm. the value of money of these wines makes them attractive. Uh, and then. Yanudi, there are some varieties like Promara and Yanudi that are local Cypriot varieties that they were almost extinguished and they are being discovered now and they're very promising. Mm. So we have Yanudi coming, it's aging in bar, we have Yanudi coming out. We have a white uh, wine that is a blend of uh, 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 Promara with uh, Chardonnay. Mm. So we use some of the internationally known varieties. Uh, but we focus on the local Cypriot varieties and we have a wide range of wines for different needs uh, to accommodate different needs and different tastes. Okay. Thank you very much, Andreas. Uh, Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Us, we, we, we meet again uh, in, in, a, in a few minutes. Uh, and now, great wine. Okay. So the comments are coming. Yeah. And some comments in Greek, which are difficult to understand to me, but yeah, I believe uh, positive comments in Greek. Uh, right, uh, uh, so Panayotis. Hello, Panayotis. We can't hear hello, you. Hello, hello. Ah, now we can hear you. Dobry wieczór. Dobry wieczór. And uh, as I said, <laughs> Dobry wieczór, jak, jak się mady? Jak się mady? No, bywało lepiej, ale nie jest najgorzej. Okay, go on. Do, 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 dobry, dobry. Do, dobry, Perfect. dobry. Yeah, you know, when dobry. you're from Poland, you cannot uh, stop to complain. So, dobry, dobry. Not too dobry. Okay? Go on, Panayoti. Okay. Thank so, you. Dobry to everyone. Uh, and... Um, I will start with uh, our motto. So our 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 motto is is this: If someone closes its eyes and let the images be bored by the unique flavor and odor of our family's wine, we'll eventually realize that the journey continues on our hearts' wine. So, when you drink wine. It has to pass first of all from your heart and then to the rest of your body in order to understand and feel it 
to its whole essence. And I wanted to start with a history lesson, but I will continue from where it left by Mr. Psaras, that he, he very nice um, uh, showed to us the importance. So there is a controversy between uh, Creta, the island of Crete, and the island of Cyprus, because in both islands, the scientists found the most, um, the oldest uh, vineyards in the world. So it seems that uh, uh, in both islands, we don't know if it came first from Creta or from Cyprus. But in both islands, uh, there is an estimation of a uh, wine uh, making uh, tradition of around 7,000 years old. So, why our wine is, um, is very special for us? Because it gives you unforgettable pleasures. Why? Because as you see in the picture, our years it is surrounded uh, in with uh, mountains and uh, this area it is called Panaya this is the Panaya region as you can see for the from the photo so this part is a nature blessed place where the vines grown within exceptional microclimate there is a specific microclimate in Panaya and uh, it is added uh, that the moisture, our vineyards are moisted by the cool breeze of the Paphos forest. Uh, the Paphos forest is the biggest forest in Cyprus and the Panaya region. It is uh, in the west part of Cyprus in high altitudes. So uh, we mainly focus on uh, uh, planting and uh, making uh, in indigenous varieties from indigenous varieties and actually ancient indigenous varieties it was discovered by scientists uh, as genuine wine producers uh, we stay in uh, in this region and uh, we put our best in order to um, to respect and promote the tradition that it was uh, sent to us by our uh, descendants. So, although we are only a small winery, okay, of 120 uh, square meters, we are a fourth generation winemaker uh, producers. And uh, we, we know we have the knowledge of uh, around more of 120 years. Uh, and um, we have a our vineyard is fully integrated, and we have a capacity of 50,000 bottles per year. And uh, our wines are under the exceptional category of protected geographical indication. Paphos. It is called Paphos local wine. This means that it can only be produced in Paphos area. And uh, as I said before, that although we are only uh, four years old, uh, the vinery, from the very first year of its faction, won a gold medal in a domestic competition in Cyprus. I have to add here that why our vineyards in the region, in Panaya region, uh, so specific? because we use wild yeasts we do not buy from abroad or we do not take from other places we use the wild yeast that it's produced in our own soil so uh, this uh, uh, in, uh, this with the special microclimate this combination has a result in the production of unique wines in color, aroma, and taste. Uh, as you see in the picture, we use only stainless steel. So why? Because we don't want to spoil the taste 
and the aromas and the flavors of our one wine. We want it to be pure. So they stay there three to five months maximum and then are bottled and stored. Uh, it is worth mentioning that we are following the wise, the clever ancient Greek technique that is to, pro, to, to grow, to cultivate wine only on limestone. So our vineyards, you can find them only on limestone, no other soil. This is our tradition uh, and, and this is our, um, our thinking. So we keep doing this. We don't change our mentality. because it's a successful mentality. Now, regarding Agia Paraskevi, Agia uh, Paraskevi, uh, this is a white dry wine, and, and it is the name of the location, actually, where our vineyards are grown. It, is, it comes from the indigenous ancient grape variety, white grape variety, Xinisteri. And it is the dominant white grape variety of Cyprus. At high altitudes, such in our area, it can give wines with more mineral character and adequate acidity. Uh, it is called a wine treasure of the area. The location uh, of the vineyard, it is uh, around uh, 850 meters, 25 years old, with a yield of 500 kilos per decar. There is a unique, refreshing taste with a long and expressive finish. It presents bright, light golden yellow color with green heat and has an aromatic bouquet where exotic fruits and white flowers combine greatly. It accompanies fish and seafood mezes and other um, crawfish and mostly white meat like kachka. So duck. Duck it is considered scientifically that is a white meat. No, kachka, kachka is perfect, yes. Uh, it's better than duck. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then... Ah. No, no, this is the one first one. bottle. Only it's one right. bottle and then the other. Yes. Okay. The red one afterwards. Okay. Yes. And how many different wines do we produce? Just two uh, wines or you have more? No, no, no. Uh, we produce uh, th uh, three wines and uh, Slivovice, our, our own, um, the Zivania. Uh, we call, you call it Slivovice, but we call it Zivania but only from grapes, not from apricots, um, not from other fruit, only from grapes. Your vocabulary in Polish uh, is really extensive. Uh, did you, by any chance, have you ever had a, a, a girlfriend from Poland? No. No. I study in Czech. I'm studying Czech. <laughs> Mendelova <Okay>. Universita <laughs> w Brnie. <laughs> ah, Brnie, this is Moravia, not Czech. Brnie. Okay. Uh, Moravia, yes. Moravia, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes. yeah, perfect. In okay, Moravia. thank you. So you studied in in Moravia. Okay. Great, thank yes. you very much. Um, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, how did you like it? So if I remember well, the the the, the winery is... Uh, 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 how old is the winery? The vintage, the, the vineyards are older than the winery, yes? Or not? Did yes, I... yes, yes, yes. It's 25 years and our vineyard it is only functioning for uh, four years. Um, okay. 2018, yes. Okay. This, it, this is family... why... I... Uh -huh. Yes, it is a family tradition. Um, as I aforementioned, it's um, like going from grand -grand grandparent to grandparent, etc. The 120 years, it's only... <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. on the link, yeah. <laughs> something, it's something to show because our ancestors uh, were always uh, living there. So 
Uh, so we we don't know actually we don't know yeah it just it just it goes back as we remember from okay. uh, the grand grand point. yeah okay Panayotis thank you very much thank you very much and the price uh, 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 yeah there is a comment a good choice and congratulations uh, uh, so the, the congratulations Jack <laughs> Dziękuję, jest perfekt. Śliwowica, dziękuję and uh, that, kaczka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and some bad words in Czech? Do you know? Uh, well, uh, we have better bad I words in Polish, uh, you know? I don't know, maybe... Perdele. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's dumb. Panayotis, Panayotis, we will meet in few minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, and now, uh, and now, Yanis, Yanis, and Voni Panayas. Thank you very much, Panayotis. Uh, you made my day. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Yanis. Good evening, uh, the microphone. Hello, everybody. Hello, yes, hi. How hi. are you? So you? You have two wines at once, be ready, and you stay longer with us, right? I'm okay, I'm, I'm ready. You're ready, perfect, thank you. Okay, so uh, my name is Yannis, uh, Yannis Kiriagiris. Uh, I'm the enologist of uh, our family winery, Buni Panayas. Uh, so I'm part of the second generation. Jan is the microphone. You turn it off. The microphone. Yeah. Is it okay now? Now it's okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. So please repeat. Okay. The so last. Uh, I, I don't know until which point did you hear? Almost everything. Uh, I believe last two words. Uh, okay. So as I was saying, uh, the, the winery was established in, in 1987 as the first private uh, regional winery of, uh, of the island uh, by our father, Andreas, uh, who has uh, previously worked as, uh, as an officer uh, in the Department of Viticulture and Enology here in, the, in Cyprus, in Limassol. So uh, my father at uh, his previous work, uh, he was responsible for experiments, analysis, and uh, checks regarding exportation. And uh, the vision behind the, the foundation of the winery was to uh, was the production actually of uh, good, high quality Cypriot wines and, and the revival uh, of the indigenous grapes uh, of our uh, of our island. So. Uh, he started back then with the most famous uh, varieties like Sinisteria and Mavro, and slowly, slowly, um, he achieved to rediscover and revive, propagate, propagate and revive uh, the more rare grapes. Uh, so now, our, now we are in position to, to cultivate and vinify eight different uh, varieties, five whites and three reds. Uh, from the whites, we use, uh, of course, Xinisteri, um, Moroganella, Spurtigo, Vasilis, and Promara. And from the reds, we have Mavro, Maratheftigo, and Giannudi. Uh, as we can see in the pictures, um, um, the vineyards are situated uh, in the mountainous part of, of the Bathos district. So uh, we have vineyards uh, from 800 meters above sea level up to 1,150 meters. Um, the soil here is uh, limestone at the first layer. Uh, there is some, uh, some schistolithic also um, uh, soils here. And the second layer is very rich in clay. So, um, of course, as an island, as a Mediterranean island, we have a typical uh, Mediterranean climate with plenty of uh, sunshine, but uh, in combination with the high altitude, we have cooler climatic conditions, 
of course, drier climatic conditions. We don't have uh, high levels of humidity, such as in the, the coastal uh, regions of the island. Um, because the, uh, the indigenous grapes are very well adapted to the hot and the hot climate and the drought, uh, the, the vineyards here are dry farmed, so no irrigation. Uh, we just uh, have the, um, the, the rains uh, during, the aut during autumn and winter uh, that are enough for our grapes uh, to give us uh, fruit of very good concentration. And uh, with uh, all these noble elements to be in very, in very good uh, and very harmonic uh, composition. Um, what else? Uh, I think that's all about the terroir. As a winery, uh, we have a capacity, we produce around 200,000 bottles per year. Uh, we have two series of wines, the classic line uh, and the micro vinifications uh, project. It's a relatively new project, started in, 19, in uh, 2017. Uh, it's, it started as an experimental uh, work, so the idea there is to uh, apply different um, vinific first of all, cultivation protocols and vinification protocols uh, to our native grapes and see how they respond, how they perform uh, in different conditions. Uh, the whole effort is to understand uh, the archipicity discover their typicity and uh, get the chance to express, um, to express its, their character uh, in the optimum way. Uh, so today we want to taste, we have two wines from the classic line, uh, a white wine from the rare grape of Promara uh, and the red wine from Yanudi, we want to see later. Uh, so this is Promara 2019 vintage. Uh, yeah, so for Promara, Promara actually uh, took its name from uh, the word proimo, that in Greek uh, means early ripening. Uh, in general, we can say that the, the local grapes are mid to late ripening grapes. So for our altitudes, uh, we start the harvest usually first days of uh, September for Promara. And we continue later after 20, 25 days uh, for the rest, uh, rest seven varieties we use. And um, uh, we can say that Promara, it's uh, the plethoric um, white grape of Cyprus. It's a variety that gives uh, full bodied white wines uh, that are uh, age worthy and very food friendly. Um, it has, it, it gives us uh, typical aromas. Uh, aromas of uh, apricots, mainly peach and nectarine, and also some uh, exotic fruit aromas. Uh, it has uh, very good levels of acidity and uh, a very characteristic uh, oily texture with, uh, with full body. Uh, for, for the specific uh, label, um, the, the, ferment, the vinification starts uh, in the steel tank. So we start with a short cold maceration uh, in order to, to extract more uh, varietal aromas. Uh, we continue with uh, a spontaneous fermentation. So uh, it's a common uh, fact for our, of our wines. We don't inoculate with any commercial yeast. Uh, we just leave the, the yeast from our terroir to perform uh, the fermentation. We believe that uh, it's it's an ideal way to express both uh, the character of the varieties, but also the uh, the character of the terroir. Um, and so we continue later uh, for the for Promara with uh, a partly maturation of the wine in oak barrels. That's around uh, forty percent for this uh, vintage. Uh, of course, we use just uh, French oak barrels. We don't like very much the American oak barrels. Uh, I think they, they alter uh, the, the character, the aromas uh, of the grapes. So we chose to have only French barrels. 
uh, and uh, the, the total blend uh, performs also a total uh, period on, on its own lease for six months. Uh, so we, we do, we perform the so-called uh, badonage technique in order to enhance uh, further the, the mouth filling effect uh, of the variety and also to, to enhance the complexity, the overall complexity uh, of the wine. Uh, that's all for Promara. I don't know if you like to to answer some questions first and then proceed to the red or do it directly. Well, let me ask you one question. Uh, you said you produce about 2,000 uh, 100,000 uh, bottles per year. Uh -huh. yep. And the highest vineyard is about 1,150 meters above sea level. Right? Correct. Yep. But the average altitude of your vineyard mm -hmm. is uh, about what? The average altitude, we can say that is 1,000 meters. Uh, yeah, because the majority of the, of the vineyards are planted in in the um, in, in what is traditionally known as Bunipa uh, Nayas. Uh, that's the uh, traditional name of the vineyards zone of the viticulture uh, viticultural zone here. Actually, if we give it a free translation, Buni uh, in Greek uh, means a small mountain, and Panaya is the name of our village. So it's it's a small mountain of the village of Panaya. That's the meaning okay. of the name. Uh, something I forgot to, to mention before is that the, the whole area, um, the, the vineyards of the whole area uh, are trained as bush vines, uh, the traditional uh, gobelet system we have in Cyprus. Um, but we believe that is um, it's something that we need to maintain. First of all, it's, it's, uh, it's a part of our tradition and culture. Uh, as, uh, as Cyprus, uh, but further, it's a pruning system, it's a shaping system that uh, it has uh, many advantages. It, it permits a better photosynthesis uh, for, the, for the varieties because it receives uh, the sun from all the aspects. And uh, of course, it's uh, because of uh, the, the, um, it has more uh, leaf layers, it gives uh, more protection uh, to the berries from any any heat wave or any uh, bad conditions in general. Um, yeah, if, if there are some um, some questions or something I need to clarify for... Uh, there is the a question about well. the PDO wines. Uh -huh. uh, are you producing any, any PDO? Uh, all, okay, although we are in the, we are part of the PDO that is called uh, Vunibanayas Ambelidis, uh, at the moment uh, we don't produce any wine, any wine on this PDO. Uh, it's our choice anyway not to do it because uh, we believe that uh, in general, uh, excluding maybe Gumandaria, uh, the PDOs, the dry PDOs, uh, are, are no, they do not express the real uh, sense of terroir. Uh, I mean the, the legislation of the of this PDO. So we disagree uh, with the loose, let's say, um, current legislation of the PDOs. So we we try to express the area outside the PDO anyway. I mean outside the law of the PDO. Of course, the, the vineyards are inside the area of the PDO. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's clear. Yeah, uh, I believe it's clear, yes. Mm -hmm. So the comments, uh, I don't know if you see it in English or in Polish. Uh, uh, I can understand English. You can, uh, yeah, but yeah, not Polish. I got it in Polish, yeah. yeah. So perfect touch of, of barrel and lovely wine. Huh? Ah, ah, okay. We can uh, so so I, I just coming back to my to my uh, to my question which was not a question so two hundred thousand bottles per year at uh -huh. this altitude uh, it's pretty rare isn't it yeah it's a big production with uh, high altitude is you're not in Argentine 
Yeah, yeah, of course we are not in Andrew Tain. There are very steep cliffs here, uh, very small plots, uh, not mechanization at all. Uh, anyway, as a family, uh, at the moment we possess around 35 hectares of own land. And uh, so we produce this quantity, uh, not, it's around 70% we source grapes uh, from these 35 hectares. And we have some, uh, let's say, stable uh, collaborators, vine growers in the area um, uh, that we advise them during the whole year and we buy the grapes uh, at the end of the, uh, at, during the harvest. Uh, that's uh, that's more for uh, it values more for it's valued more for uh, Xinisteri, some old uh, nice bush vines of Xinisteri and Maraheftigo. Uh, for the more rare grapes we mentioned before, uh, all the all the grapes uh, are sourced from our own uh, land since uh, the the local growers are not very keen anyway to. To you know, to plant something different from Mavro and Xinisteri, uh, and go to a more rare grape, unknown, let's say, grape for them. So we we did it by ourselves, uh, and we yes, we at the moment we are we have eight grapes, and uh, there are some more anyway uh, local grapes. In total, there are, there are sixteen registered indigenous varieties that uh, I think we're going to experiment in the new in the, in the next few years. Hey, uh, there's one uh, one uh, Christos is asking for more uh, for deeper explanation of the of the uh, explanation of the of the PDO question. But uh -huh. you can pass on to the second one, and then you 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 okay. can also explain it further, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, the red wine we have today tonight is uh, it's called Yanudi. That's the homonymous uh, red variety, another rare grape. Uh, that's 2017 vintage. So Yanudi um, is considered as, as, let's say, the new prospect of the island uh, for the production of uh, elegant, uh, red, age-worthy wines. It's a grape that is rich in tannins. Uh, it has high acidities. Uh, typically, it delivers aromas of, um, of spices, herbs, and some black, uh, black fruits, blackberries. Um, Compared to Maratheftigo, that is uh, the other uh, big, uh, bold, let's say, red grape of Cyprus, Yanudi, although is very rich in tannins, it, it gives uh, more elegant and more smooth tannins compared to, to Maratheftigo. Um, so for this uh, specific vintage, we have um, a vinification, we started the vinification with uh, a cold maceration for some days in the steel tank. Uh, then we proceeded with a, a maceration and the spontaneous fermentation uh, for some days in order to extract uh, some more tannins and uh, some more polysaccharides from the skins of the, of the grapes. And uh, then we continued with maturation in fresh oak barrels. Uh, in general, we prefer to use uh, old barrels, used barrels, uh, a majority anyway of, uh, of used barrels, so uh, it's around 60% of used barrels up to 8th use, uh, along with some uh, new use of 2nd and 3rd uh, use. Uh, again, it's French oak barrels. Uh, we have two different capacities here, that's 225 and 500 liters. Um, yeah, the analytical stats are there. Um, the, ah, something I forgot to say is that uh, yeah. after the, the fermentation, uh, we follow a malolactic fermentation uh, to get some more complexity, smooth uh, beat the tannins and the, and the harsh, the, the more harsh acidity of the tartaric acid and get the, of the malic acid, sorry, and get the more uh, buttery, creamy, smooth acidity of the lactic acid. 
the alcohol for this one is what we have is a maximum alcohol for our wine, so it's 13.5. Uh, again, we I believe that uh, alcohol is is very important uh, part uh, of the of the overall uh, sensorial quality of the wine. Um, so we, it's it's a, it's something that uh, we don't like to alter uh, the the varietal expression again. So uh, usually our wines start from alcohols around 12 and we have a maximum of 13, 13.5 for the uh, dry wines, I mean. Um, yeah, that's all. Uh, as you can see, uh, if, you, if you have noted uh, both previously and now, these two varieties uh, are planted in very small um, in very uh, small quantities, so uh, they cover approximately uh, a percentage of around 0.2 of the total uh, viticultural surface of Cyprus, that is around 7,700 hectares nowadays. So uh, for Yanu is just 17 hectares, according to, to the official uh, statistics. And for Promara, if I well remember, it's just uh, 13 uh, hectares. Um, so we speak about very tiny quantities. And uh, that, uh, but at the same point, uh, we speak for uh, grapes that we believe that they have a very high potential and they have, uh, a, they can deliver a very unique and authentic, if you prefer, uh, character to the the world of wine uh, and the and the unique proposal uh, to the world of the wine and uh, express the Cypriot taste, let's say. Okay, Yanis, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, just a few words about the PDO once again to to uh, Christos Christian. Okay, so uh, for the PDO, there is a PDO in our zone called Bunibanaya San Belidis. That uh, actually our main, uh, what we mainly disagree uh, is that uh, unfortunately the legislation did, did not follow and uh, don't follow, or doesn't follow uh, the, the traditional. Um, um, let's say the traditional zone of the area so traditionally what is what was known as Bunibanayas, it was the area uh, here that uh, is situated uh, started from uh, an elevation of 800 meters and uh, went up to 1150 meters unfortunately with the with the uh, official let's say registra uh, registration of the pdo uh, the ministry decided to open the zone also to lower altitudes and uh, imagine that nowadays includes uh, altitudes uh, down to 400 meters and uh, we believe that it doesn't uh, represent uh, the, the real expression uh, of the historical terroir of our area that's our main uh, disagree Okay, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, it seems uh, pretty clear to me, but uh, what about you, Christian? Okay, thank you, Yanis. I uh, uh, I think it was a really nice presentation and and uh, and uh, congrats uh, the the wines and the the presentation in the battles, uh, especially the red one. This is something. Thank you very much. Uh, it is clear. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. It's clear. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Stay you. with us. And uh, yes, Andreas, uh, Andreas, Saras, and Maccas Winery again. Andreas, hello. The red wine. The red wine. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Can't hear you. The microphone. No, the microphone. Yeah. No. Yeah. 
and now did you press the button of the microphone yeah. okay so this is yeah he's coming back okay here we are oh, great yeah okay so the floor is yours andreas and go on please okay here we have a, a wine that is based on uh, some of the Cypriot varieties, Maraceftico and Lefkada. Lefkada is very unique. And then we use some of the uh, Grenache that is aromatic and Syrah that is very well adapted to the Cypriot soil. The choices we are mess, met, uh, made by our enologist uh, based on his uh, understanding and, and uh, uh, we want to have a wine that uh, has the Cypriot uh, varieties plus some of the international well adapted to the Cypriot uh, climate uh, conditions. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes we can hear you. So I stay, oh. I stay tuned perhaps to, to, to uh, just to... Uh -huh. Now the it, it is um, a wine that is uh, designed to be an entry level easy drinking wine. Uh, out of the six red wines we have, this is uh, the one that is not aging in barrel. Uh, and then we have a single varieties or some of the local varieties that are aging barrel, depending on the variety and the uh, and, and the results that we want to have there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the price of this wine? Okay, you, you mean the the, um, the wholesale price or, or the retail price? Well, uh, up to you. Just uh, just indicate uh, which one you you give us. Okay, the the horse price it's around uh, uh, four four euro seventy. Okay, and in retail in Cyprus, this is about. It sells around uh, six euros in the market or somewhere there. Okay, and your recommendation, uh, food and wine. Okay, this is with uh, um, and meats. Is is uh, it has a uh, two thousand nineteen has a high volume of fourteen percent. Mm -hmm. It has the taste of cherry, strawberry, and uh, a hint of violet. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, well uh, combined with uh, types of uh, meats, uh, uh, chicken, uh, duck, uh, and all, uh, all different types of meats. All right. OK. Any comments? How do you like it? Folks, well, there is one uh, comment by someone in, uh, in other European countries where we did send a wine who has written and it's uh, someone something in the, in the internet that he says that the price of this wine does injustice to it. Mm. The price makes you think that this is an average wine while this is a better wine. Mm. And this is said by uh, someone who's a sommelier, someone who uh, has expertise in wine. Oh. So uh, someone who appreciated this uh, particular wine. And we get very good comments uh, from from customers and uh, and people. Yeah, uh, that's 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 a big compliment for the. Oh yes, it is. Okay, Andreas, thank you very much. Stay with Thanks. us, please. Uh, so some comments here. Very nice wine. Very nice wine. So I believe uh, uh, this some some attendees like it. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity, and thank you everybody. Thank you, thank you, and stay with us, please. And now, Jararambos, Jararambos and Monolitos Winery, the only one winery with only one, one wine here. Mr. Jararambos, please join us. Join us, please. Jararambos from Monolitos. Mm -hmm. And we are in the category of international varieties now. Haralambos, 
Do we see? Ah, yes, yes, he's coming, he's coming, yes. Hello, good evening. The microphone, please, the microphone is off. Press the microphone, the button, the microphone, because it's off. Apparently it's off, uh, we can't hear you. <clears throat> now, turning. yes, it works, thanks God. So this is your time. Okay, many thanks for the organizers and to the people present to this presentation. I hope you will find it interesting. <clears throat> Monolithos is a family-owned boutique winery located close to the village of Pachna. Uh, the village of Pachna lies about 750 meters above sea level and 15 kilometers from the sea. And it's the biggest wine village or Krasohoria, as we call it, of the district of Limassol. Uh, the local climate is typical Mediterranean, mild winters and hot summers, and um, there is hardly any rain between June and uh, September. Pachna soil is relatively poor, uh, limestone and chalk, and therefore it's not surprising that the uh, vine is the most uh, cultivated plant. Uh, the winery takes its name from the monoliths, these uh, pier stones that are scattered in the fields. Monolithos, it uh, stands for monolithos, which means single stones. And uh, they have a long history in, from the ancient times. Today, modern archaeology believes that the monoliths were part of pressers, but um, people were connecting them with uh, myths and uh, a number of supernatural properties. So we chose the name Monolithos for our winery just to remind us of these magical stones and hopefully we'll have also some magical wines. Now, we can speak a little bit about our winery. The, our winery is located, as I said, uh, 500 meters approximately from the village and was built in the principle of quality and quantity. In other words, um, all our grapes um, uh, come from about two, three kilometers from the winery and only we use only local grapes. Most of the vineyards are of the traditional bush type goblets vines and um, most work is done by manually including harvesting um, the most of the vineyards are um, uh, planted with indigenous grapes but in the last 50 years uh, a number of new international cultivars found a new home in uh, and adapted very well to the environment and the terroir of uh, Pachna. So we have nowadays uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Shiraz, uh, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, and many others um, cultivated. Our winery is equipped with a modern equipment and systems and uh, can perform all winemaking from crushing to stemming to cold soaking, processing, pressing, fermentation, clarification, malolactic fermentation, barrel aging, mobilization, and of course bottling. Um, we produce 12 wines, three different styles. We have the premium wines, which are our pride. And of course we have the classic wines and the value wines. All our premium wines more or less use oak barrels because we believe that the oak barrel produces smoother, rounded, and more complex wines with longer life and a better color and mouthfeel. Um, well, if you wish, we come out wine to see how we can taste it. Okay, 
Agua Chasca Perné is um, made from two well matched grape varieties, which are uh, the new form in uh, Cyprus and adapted very well to the whole climate of Terroir of Patna. We use 70% Chasca for this wine and 30% Cabernet. And of course, it matures in the, for approximately 12 months in, in the barrel. Um, now, if you look at the wine, you can see the color that um, is very strong red, which is typical of uh, a Shiraz wine. And of course, it is, um, has good viscosity and clarity. And if you swivel the wine, you will be able to see the tears, which shows you that uh, it has high alcohol and body. Now, when you smell the wine, the first thing you will notice is that it went through the barrel, of course. You can feel the vanilla and the wood, the oak. But you can also uh, identify a number of uh, red uh, fruit. Um, now, if you taste it, it has some sweetness, which comes from the alcohol and the barrel, and the bay also has a bit of acidity, which is, it makes it more food forward. In other words, you want to eat something. Overall, it's, uh, the tannins are soft. The wine is well balanced. It has full body, it's complex, and um, I hope you find it delicious. Uh, this wine can accompany rich meals, like stews, roast uh, chicken, lamb, but it can also go with um, pasta dishes with red sauces. sauces. And um, uh, it's a pleasant even sometimes on its own. Mm -hmm. um, the wine was um, uh, received a number of awards. The latest one is in uh, uh, a gold medal in Frankfurt. Mm. And you can see from the bottle that the um, the gold metal and also the monolith, which is the uh, stones, the pier stones, which exist in the area of Pachna. Okay, well, thank you for listening. I hope you find it interesting, and I'm waiting for your questions. Well, uh, there's a question about the acidity and uh, compliments about the great wine and bottle design, but uh, the. Uh, uh, chokeberry and ripened black uh, wild berries uh, in the in the nose on the nose, and what about the acidity? Well, there is a little bit of acidity, and that's um, any any good wine should have some acidity, particularly if you want want to use it with uh, with food, because it helps. It, it asks for it asks for food. Mm -hmm. It's not flat, in other words, if it is only in only the sweetness, it doesn't um, necessarily need food, but uh, the acidity is asking for food. Uh, of course, that's a personal uh, expression, but um, mm -hmm. everyone can have his, <laughs> his thoughts. Sure. And uh, uh, it's much more fresher on the in the mouth than in the nose. Uh, and what about the price, ex-seller or uh, retail price, <laughs> more or less? Well, the, this price is approximately 12 euros. 12 euros. Okay. So just one last question uh, from me, the, the, the general one. The climate is changing, yeah? You, yes. you have your vineyards at the altitude of 750 and meters. 50. And what are, I mean, the generally, what, in general, what, what are the plans for the future if the climate change? Yeah. Well, 
<clears throat> it is a, a very important aspect and it's something that really if you are involved in wine, you have to watch the weather and how the grapes and the vines um, are uh, developing. So basically all from July to the time that we harvest, we check every week, if not even more frequently, uh, how the progress of the acidity and the sugar uh, develops. And eventually we decide when to have the harvesting. Uh, it's okay. a very important decision because once you cut the grapes, you cannot go back. So uh, this, is, this is what really um, changes from year to year. For example, the 2017, we had a very hot year. And where is this one in 2018? Uh, we had a lot of rain and that was a different, there are two different wines, although the grapes are from the same vineyards. And I was surprised that the 2018 had less tannings than uh, the 2017, but this is what we call vintage. Yeah. So basically I would say from our experience, uh, it seems that we have to move gradually towards, instead of say the third week of August, towards the middle of August, if not, if not earlier, uh, if, the way, if the temperature begins to, mm. continues to change. And all the aromas uh, do not suffer on it? Uh, I mean, the polyphenol... Uh, well, this is that why you have to test and make sure that they don't become uh, resins. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Karambos. It was a pleasure, and uh, yeah, that's. Uh, Any questions? Yeah. And we know the we know the word monolith, as all the words in Polish are coming from Greek language. So the monolith is also. <laughs> okay. okay, we know it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay with us, Thank please. You. And uh, well, uh, some comments on the on the chat, folks. Anything. Uh, so now Panayotis again. Uh, Panayotis, please join us. Panayotis, yes, hello. Panayotis, hi. No hi. bad words this time. <laughs> they are too similar in Polish. No, no. No, uh, no, no. I answer. I ask. I only answer to your question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you, you know if, much if, more than now. <laughs> 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 recall yourself some other bad words, but no, 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 no. I, I only know some few, but uh, some I don't few. use because yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, it's not polite. So let's go, let's go on, let's go. So yeah. now, this is Sarka. Sarka, we we gave again the name of the location to our uh, wine, and this is a red dry wine that derives from indigenous ancient grape varieties of Maraceftigo and Mavro with a combination of international varieties Mataro and Shiraz. Uh, we found this um, uh, combination um, to our own um, mentality very uh, very fine, and uh, we have to say that uh, the grape varieties, red grape varieties of Maraceftico and Mavero, they are being cultivated in the area of uh, Panaya for a very long time. We found a, a specific uh, document in a in uh, a monastery of um, of the of the area in panaya that it is written there uh, and the scientists presume that maraceftico and mavro were cultivated uh, 600 years ago when cyprus was occupied by the venetian rule so uh, it is uh, very old uh, uh, varieties that it's been grown to the area and when they are in high altitudes uh, like panaya region 
they can give all their aromatic metier uh, and Maraceptico is considered the best Cypriot grape variety, whereas Mavro is the most widely planted in Cyprus. Uh, I have to say that Mavro means cherry, black, uh, because of, um, of the color of the wine that gives. Uh, so now, if you remember before, uh, the white dry wine, it was cultivated in 850 meters, the, the vineyards, uh, and this it's in even higher altitude. Uh, it has been uh, cultivated in 1,300 meters with an average age of 60 years and a yield of 350 kilos per decar. There is a balanced and rich taste with a velvety finish that lasts. It presents red color with orange brown heats and has an aromatic bouquet of red fruits such as sour cherry and sweet aging odors such as cocoa and vanilla. It can accompany ideally red meats or poultry with red sauces that um, I know personally that the Polish people are very fond of red sauces. We have to say that which one of you wants to come in Cyprus and found himself in Cyprus? It will be our great pleasure to guide you in uh, and show you around in our vineyard and our vineyard facilities. And uh, the family can promise you a trip to the land of taste and arts. So, uh, well, that's we, all. Thank you. Thank you, Panayotis. I, I must welcome. say it was a great pleasure both to taste your wines and, uh, and to see uh, a person, a Cypriot, uh, 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 who studied in in Moravia, and do you know uh, do you know the price of this wine? Uh, the Excellent. price of uh, uh, yeah, uh, I have to ask our financial consultant because I do not give the prices. Um, I represent the company uh, and um, in seminars and etc. But I, I'm not the one that gives the um, uh, yeah, the final price. I have to ask, and uh, uh, I am um, um, open uh, to a discussion, and uh, uh, I can write it down um, uh, for you. Uh, I need to ask first. You're welcome. It will be grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, one day we come. We come all <laughs> to Cyprus. Thank you for your invitation. <laughs> Definitely. It's, uh, it's an amazing place. And uh, um, I have uh, friends from Czech Republic that uh, came to the island. And uh, they were... Uh, astonished uh, by the hospitality of the people by the taste of food one check told me hey panos what are you trying to do you are trying to kill us from food what is going on <laughs> uh, we love big portions as you can see we love big portions <laughs> okay okay that's All right thank you very much uh, uh this uh, and uh, yeah thank you Thank you, Panayotis. It was a pleasure. So we uh, stay in contact and uh, uh, and uh, yes, one day or you come to Poland uh, and, or we come to, to Cyprus. Yeah, I want to come to Poland because I've never came. Although I was very close, I didn't have the opportunity to 
to visit Poland. Uh, although well, two colleagues uh, of mine, they were Polish, and uh, they, they showed us around in Prague. They showed us around in Prague, but not in Katowice or Krakow. I want to visit Krakow. Yeah. Well, you have uh, good luck. I'm from Krakow. I'm from Krakow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are also the, the guys from Warsaw, Wrocław, Poznań, Warszawa, and last but not least, Stettin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, this is fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, I know Poznań because they have a very a great uh, forestry faculty because I study forestry and um, they are they are doing a really nice job yeah yeah forestry so, okay forestry yes forestry okay, so, uh, most yeah. most of the most of the families uh, most of the family are foresters we are four foresters in the family <laughs> 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 okay, okay, okay. And you remember uh, the brigand room size from Czech Republic? Room size. The? Room size, the brigand. Brigand? Yeah, that was for the. Well, uh, never mind. I will show you when you come to Krakow. Okay. 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 Room okay. size. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Panayotis. Perfect. And now. Uh, You're uh, thank yeah. you very much. And now Ficardos, Ficardos, and the last wine, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Ficardos, hello. Yes, hi. Hi. Okay, so this so, is the... Uh, for the last wine, uh, I guess for the night, uh, we have here a wine called Leonardo. And uh, Leonardo has a bit of a backstory. It was... Uh, it's named after my brother, my small brother. Uh, we first produced, my dad first produced this wine back in 2001 when he was born. Uh, it was more like a celebration wine. Uh, but since then, uh, he decided to produce it when we have a good vintage. So, uh, and one common thing of all the Leonardo's ever made is the high uh, alcohol. So to get this high alcohol in our area, you need to overripe a bit the grapes. So uh, it's a common characteristic, but that's not easy in uh, altitudes around 500 meters uh, to have a good pH, uh, good acidity, and at the same time, a, a good wine in general. Uh, so Leonardo is coming from actually two small vineyards next to each other. So it's almost like one vineyard uh, from Ledimbu village. Uh, the average age of those vineyards is 16 years and the harvest was at the end of august which is uh, quite a bit earlier than what we would usually harvest this kind of uh, grapes uh, the uh, now in the vinification process we do follow always uh, with overripe grapes uh, cool maheration first so in this case it was three days so three days the juice and skins were soaking at approximately 10 degrees. Uh, so on the third day, basically, we increase the temperature and then we continue fermentation with the skins. So in total, it was 10 days on the skins. Uh, after the fermentation finished in the stainless steel tanks, uh, we followed with malolactic fermentation. That's again, starting in a stainless steel tank. And towards the very end, we move it into oak barrels. Um, in this case, for this wine, we went with hybrid uh, oak bottles. So hybrid means that we had American staves and uh, French uh, butts, we call them. Uh, so we have a wine that is, um, let's say, very aromatic, uh, intense in aromatics. So we were not scared about using a new bottle for this one. And also, we're not scared to use the hybrid bottles. Usually, we kind of avoid uh, hybrids or, in general, American oak when it comes to wines that are not as intense. But in this case, we felt this is more uh, appropriate. Uh, the acidity, uh, uh, surprisingly, in uh, this altitude, 
for a Cabernet is usually very good. So there is almost no adjustment done when it comes to Cabernet. So it's much easier to make this, uh, let's say, more powerful, high alcohol red wines and not worry about uh, bad acidity or very high pH. Uh, so uh, now let's move on to, yeah, to the tasting. Sure. We have a question about the price. Uh, the and price the uh, retail price, let's say, is at the winery 20 euro. Okay. So in a, let's say, a retail store in Cyprus is also around 2021. So it depends on the location. Yeah. And how many bottles do you produce of this wine? Uh, for this specific one, it was 4,150. 4, so Leonardo, one thing that is not stable is always the quantity, because it's always a vineyard we are picking. So I don't know each vintage how much wine I'm going to produce. So for example, we made one in 2016, the vintage you're seeing now, 2012, 10, 7, 2, and 1. 1 was when my brother was born. So on each vintage, it's usually one vineyard. And so the quantity changes. Okay. So now, if you want, we could move on to the uh, tasting part. So uh, let me just take it also. So for this wine, we have a deep uh, red color. Uh, that's quite common for a Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, we have aromas and flavors are more towards a dark fruit. Uh, it's more like a blackberry, a black uh, currant, a dark cherry. And what you might notice is that uh, the fruit is not as fresh as you would find in a normal Cabernet that is, let's say, lower in alcohol. Here we're having more of the jammy flavors. Uh, so it's quite obvious that the grapes were overripe uh, for this uh, specific wine. So now in terms of the taste, we have a more uh, full body uh, red wine. Uh, you're still following with the dark fruits. Uh, and uh, you don't necessarily have alcohol sticking out. So it's, I think, a quite balanced when it comes to the alcohol. Usually it's scary to have high alcohol, but I think uh, the fruit is there to support it. You also have the bottle that gives you a lot of uh, vanilla in the taste and in the aromas, I didn't mention before, uh, a lot of spices. So that complements and kind of brings it into balance. So alcohol is not really an issue in this uh, case. And uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty much for the tasting. Um, now, yeah, if you want to ask me anything before I'm sharing. Just uh some comments nicely covered 15 percent of alcohol exactly <laughs> yeah and uh yeah there, there, there's a, a, a uh, let's say some some professional uh, uh, question about the about the about the the um, importing price yeah but this is perhaps afterwards uh lovely wine great balance uh, and proper cap Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we see two faces of Cyprus. Uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, low, low alcohol wines and this one. And in this case, it's uh, mm, mm, uh, what was your uh, mm, uh, uh, let's say, what was the model to you? What was uh, 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 what was the, the 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 aim of this of this uh, wine? It's, uh, uh, this wine we wanted to uh, basically it's a personal choice of what my dad personally likes mm -hmm. so that's why leonardo always uh, is targeting we are targeting to have high alcohol mm -hmm. uh, and but it's hard because as i said again we are in a hot country and having good ph and high acidity uh, with an overripe grape it's not easy. So the target here was to make, a, let's say, a 
a big boy red wine, as we call it in the family. Uh, mm -hmm. So we can show that uh, high alcohol wines don't necessarily have to be scary or uh, aggressive. And uh, I think we doing a good job when it comes to this. But it's mm. not uh, possible with all the grapes in Cyprus. Uh, for example, we noticed Shiraz can also do this kind of wines, uh, but I cannot say the same with Marathevtigo or uh, Yanudi, uh, or even for white grapes, it's even worse. You cannot overripe, let's say, Exinisteri, forget it. Uh, you're losing all the aromas, flavors, acidity, everything. So it depends on the grapes. Some grapes can handle actually uh, the hot climate of Cyprus and make big wines. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you very much, Carlos. Yeah, well, uh, well, well done, good job. Uh, well, some you. compliments coming. So uh, what is hybrid nova beczka? So what is what does it mean the hybrid new barrel? So hybrid is blend. when you uh, have American staves, so the wooden blanks, and then the back sides are uh, French oak. Yeah. So we kind of scared of American oak. It's usually very intense, very fast. So we wanted to go somewhere in between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you produce this wine every year? Uh, oh, yes. No. So, no. no. How no. old is the your moment at the moment, we have one more vintage that is kind of past our tasting uh, because usually we finish the wine and then the whole family sits down and tastes the wine and then we decide, is it Leonardo or is it not? If it doesn't make it, it will end up in our classic uh, blended red wine. Uh, so that's how it approximately we decide. Yeah, This year we have one Cabernet separated uh, fermented separate it's in the bottles already but we still don't know if it's gonna be a leonardo or not okay 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 thank you very much thank you very much uh, is there a big uh, different uh, difference between vintages uh, the last if there uh, is a big difference between uh, vintages yeah. not so much because the grapes come mostly from the same area, the same altitude, the same soil. Uh, but there is variations in terms of Leonardo in the older vintages. Older vintages were from Shiraz, uh, even Mataro back in the very beginning. So there, there is a big difference because of the grape. But when it comes to the Leonardos we're doing the last few years, they're pretty similar. Okay. Thank you, Ricardos. This was a real pleasure. No, Thank you very much. I, I, I hope, I believe, we, we we are going to meet again or in Cyprus or in Poland. You're so, welcome. And I would love to visit Poland, actually. Not at this uh, season, I, uh, I'm afraid. Yeah, but, uh, you know, in May, it's beautiful. Yeah. Even in June. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, no, and... No uh, this was the last wine for today. Uh, I deeply believe you like this wines and the presentation. And uh, yes, Andras, uh, Mr. Christo, if you are with us, if you want to join us to say goodbye and good night to everybody. Andras. Yeah. Hello. Good evening. We can't hear you. The microphone. Okay, no. now it's better. Now it's better. Now it's better. Perfect. Now it's better. All right. Uh, well, we came to an end of a two-day session. Very, very interesting presentations. I am extremely proud of our wine producers and the development that uh, our wine industry has exhibited in the last few years. And I'm sure the way forward is clearly shown by this, uh, by, by our winemakers and their presentations, very, very neat, very, very uh, precise, very scientifically put together and explained to the people. And um, 
I only want to say to them that we will continue helping them towards promoting further our wines in, uh, in markets abroad. Uh, Poland, for the time being, is our, uh, is, and, and personally, it's my main target to bring some of our wines here into this market. And I'm sure the Polish consumers will love them. Um, also, I would like to extend a very big thank you to the members of the, the, the tasting groups around Poland. And uh, I appreciate very much their effort and uh, the time taken to, uh, to taste our wines. And I really appreciate their uh, good comments that they have offered us. And, um, uh, and also, last but not least, I would like to thank Piotr yeah. thank for uh, his, uh, all his efforts to help us uh, put together this fantastic uh, two-day event. And I'm sure we will continue having these kind of events, at least, you know, during this pandemia that, um, you know, the teleconferencing is giving us a, a simple way out because we cannot meet, we cannot uh, sit together in a round table and discuss and uh, eat and uh, taste the wines and uh, so on and so forth. But for the time being, we will uh, stick with the teleconferencing, which works, I think, it uh, equally. Uh, well, not. I would prefer to be in person with people, but uh, given this situation, we will stick to the teleconferencing, as I said, and until we see where this pandemic goes. I hope, I sincerely hope, that it will go soon away and we will be able to enjoy the simple things in life again. Once again, a very, very big thank you to everybody, to Cyprus, to Poland, to Piotr, and I hope to see you soon again. Thank you very much. Thank you very, thank much. You very much. The last, the last word is yours, Piotr. <laughs> rightfully, rightfully, you gained this... Uh, you gain this uh, to to say the last word. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank Mr. you, Chancellor. Uh, uh, that was a very big pleasure, and I believe you you like it. Uh, uh, and yes, uh, I I deeply believe we will meet in person in very soon, unless for the climate. You know, the the online conferences for the climate are always good. Oh yes, um, uh, Andreas, Andreas Psaras is with us. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Andreas. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I hope I hope the business will follow us. Yeah. So the more Cyprus wines from Cyprus will appear on the market. Thank yeah, you. This is this is our goal, Piotr. This is our goal and. Uh, we, the, as I said yesterday, this event will, will, will uh, definitely not be the last. It will be the start of a series of events we plan to put together so as to, to make our wines more known to the Polish market. And um, we, just, we, we just want a chance, a chance to show that our wines really deserve to be consumed by people here. You're absolutely right. Yes. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Chancellor. And thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good yes. Week. Good and, night. Uh, we meet in next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good thank night. you. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night to everybody. Good night to everybody. Good night. Good bye, night. Bye. 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 Bye.